and welcome back to Moon Clan. My name is Frosty, and today we are picking up at Moon 20 once again. I won't lie, it's been a little while since I last recorded Moon Clan, so I'm not fully sure exactly where we're leaving off. All I know is that Frost Whisper has been a little bit sick, and fittingly enough, so have I. So hopefully both of us will be feeling better here soon. That does explain immediately why my voice may be a little bit more crusty than usual, but I'm surviving. My lungs just don't like air right now. Uh, there's really nothing else going on with me, so please don't worry. And for the other elephant in the room that I should probably address, yes, I do sound a little bit different, and no, that's not just the quality of my lungs. I did get a new microphone. I'm not fully sold on it yet. It's a lot more sensitive to nearby things, so you may hear like more vibrations of me just existing, but it should be a little bit more helpful in tuning out some extra background noise, which is good because they've been doing a lot of construction here lately. So hopefully it sounds better too. Please, please, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If this sounds good, I'll keep using it, and if not, then I'll go back to the other one that I had been using. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Moon 21 and see what fate has in store for Frost Whisper here. Alrighty, at least Frost Whisper is looking a little bit better here. So we can now walk and move without pain, so our sprain must have healed. Bite Spec wishes to join the Elders. Sparrowsar calls a meeting, and the clan honors them, and all the service Bitespec has given to them. So that's not really unexpected. Bitespec was older when he was demoted to warrior, so that sounds about right for him to be, you know, retiring into elderhood. Maybe some of that adventure and novelty has worn off a little bit now. Kaiapath had a fight with us. Oh no. I really wonder what that might have been about, since we've gotten along pretty well with Coyote Path. Frost Whisper spends some time with Fire Kit, and they both end up understanding each other a little bit better. That's good. Judas Shade is seen talking with us, and Confrey Paw playfully teases us for missing a catch. I guess we may have gone out on patrol with Confrey Paw. And it looks like we are doing okay on health. Pigeon Flick no longer has White Cough, but Sontro got it instead. And Confrey Paw has gotten a stomach ache. Swan Spot was seen in a very serious conversation with a kitty pet who ran away when another patrol approached. I think that still counts as an outside relationship, so that'll still count as a strike against Swan Spot. Icy Ice has realized that She Cat doesn't describe how they feel anymore. Okay. Oh, it looks like we are now into winter as well. A lot of snow, it feels like. Okay, so it looks like Swan Spot doesn't have any other strikes, so at least this is her first. It would really sink to have to lose our parent after all. Okay, so Sparrowsar is currently trying to learn a few basic herb remedies. He is still injured with a broken bone, so it does make sense that he's maybe trying to pick up a little bit more information there. And it especially makes sense when you consider Bite Spec, his mate was a medicine cat as well. Stonefruit is also sick with white cough, however, and he's currently fretting over a recent increase in fox sightings near camp. Last time this happened, our camp was outright attacked by a fox, so fingers crossed nobody gets hurt this go. Oh, that's right, we did switch over Ravensong to be a new medicine cat, and he really seemed to take to it very well. He's currently just craving rabbit. And my like chaser is following up with some of the kids. I think we're just gonna randomize our mediation this moon. Looks like Sky Scratch and Pigeon Fleck are pretty good friends. I guess we'll keep this open for romantic though. We are currently wondering what the inside of a two-leg den looks like. As long as we're just wandering and not actually entering, I think we're fine. Weasel Reed doesn't want to go on patrol with Little Paw, who's his apprentice. That's right, Weasel Reed surprised me last time because he actually seemed to take up the mantle of mentor very well. Meanwhile, Little Paw is promising to do their best today, and Weasel Reed is just shutting them down. Alright, so we're gonna talk with Judas Shane. Sorry, Frost Whisper, no time to talk right now. I just got a task from Stonefruit. 
I'll be sure to catch up with you some other time, though. That's fine. And unfortunately, we are arguing with our mentors, so let's see what's going on. I'd be more offended if I respected your opinion. Must have been an ugly fight, because I think Coyote Path does respect us and vice versa. Confrey Paw is currently playing a prank on Icy Eyes. I had forgotten that she had the harness as well. Uh, she was basically being punished for being grabbed by a two leg and was pretty much let go because she's still an apprentice. But we are talking with her, so let's see what's going on. Comfrey Paw is humming a catchy tune. Oh, hey, Frost Whisper, I was coming up with a song. Want to hear it? No, oh, come on. I'm not going to lie, it's very strange actually having elders in this game because I feel like most cats don't survive that long. And we've got three whole elders this go. And let's go ahead and talk with Liar Kit, who's currently wondering what it would be like to have a fish for a tail. I still want to know if that's like a mercat thing or like a literal attached fish like a chimera. But let's go ahead and talk to her. Frost Whisper, hi, can you teach me how to do a hunting pounce? Pretty please. So I just focus on those feathers over there. Mmm, rawr. I got it, I got it. Thank you so much. When I become an apprentice, I'm going to make sure the whole clan has plenty of food. And I'm going to give you my first catch, okay? Aw, that's cute. Moonfern is now a queen. So let's go ahead and have her tell a story to Liar Kit. Moonfern shares a story about forgiveness between rival warring clans, and Liar Kit takes the moral of the tale to heart, increasing empathy to make up for lack of compassion. Fluffpaw is learning how to forge connections between kits of different ages. I feel like that's gotta be really exacerbated in cats, especially, because like you get your newborns, and then you get like your one moon, which is probably like a toddler. And then you get your two moon, which is probably like four or five. Three moon, which is probably like seven or eight. Four moon, which is probably like nine-ish, ten. Five moon, which is probably like eleven, twelve. And then six moon, which is probably like thirteen. That's a pretty big age gap in any differences there. And since Fluffpaw is obviously an apprentice, I think they're going to be a little bit more energetic with the kits, so I'll try having them play fight with Shroom Kit. Shroom Kit yowls that will shred Fluffpaw to pieces one day after losing in a play fight. Intelligence minus one. I feel like that'd have to do more with any of the other stats and intelligence, but whatever you say, Shroom Kit. Okay, well at least we're feeling good enough to go back on life gen patrols again. We find a particularly smooth stone near the river that reminds you of a cat you're fond of. You think they might like it as a gift. We offer them the stone they seem genuinely touched by your thoughtfulness. Their appreciation makes you feel warm and happy inside. Maybe we use that to make up with like Coyote Path or maybe someone else. We still don't really like anyone though, I don't think. These are our current relationships. We really do have a love-hate relationship with Weasel Reen. But this is everybody here. Definitely a lot of green across the board, including a Sparrow Star, so if we get into any trouble, that could save us on the line. Okay, so our current prey is 79.3, and we need 60-ish a moon. So we're definitely going to need to send out as many hunting patrols as we can, especially since we're not going to get much in Leaf Bear. Otherwise, cats might start getting hungry. But we're actually going to start with ourselves as a border patrol. As a patrol is marking the border lines, a gang of rogues strides out of the brush, challenging the clan cats. I am a little bit concerned, but we are a group of four with pretty experienced cats, so we can't not proceed. I don't think we have to go on since this is a challenge. And this being in winter time, I don't think we're going to take this very kindly. So since we're most likely to antagonize, I think our cats would actually do that. We are kind of past the traits, though. Hmm, actually, given the fact that we're a little bit more passive, I think we'll go ahead and just proceed here. 
The rogues posh Shirinjir, eventually provoking a battle. The clan cats are strong, however, and the rogues seem to be weakened by hunger. We easily drive the intruders away. I'm actually going to send the two messing cats out together since Slylak Chaser's been having some trouble lately. They have a productive discussion while foraging and manage to gather lungwort and catmint. I think everyone else is mentor and apprentice, so they're all going to go out hunting. I'll only check in with the really exciting patrols, though. So. Okay, so... Weasel Reed and Little Paw track the scent of a fox to a deer carcass. It's either a small doe or one of last newly spawns. It's impossible to say whether the fox killed it or found it, and it's a red fox. With all of that under consideration, I don't think we're going to proceed. It's winter time, the foxes are going to be just as, if not more desperate than us. And with only one warrior and one apprentice, I don't really feel confident that we'd be able to win. Greenfin and Misty Paw hear distant howling and wonder whether to investigate the noise. For the same reasons, we're not going to proceed here. That's either a coyote or a wolf, depending, and in wintertime, we really don't want to provoke any other predators. It's better to just keep to ourselves. Let's go ahead and time skip. Alrighty, so moving into Moon 22 for the clan, 21 for us. We find a new accessory, catnip flower. We choose the sword in a safe place for now. Last time we got something, it didn't show up at all, so I don't know if that's even going to be an option for us. Moon Clan does not have enough healthy medicine cats. Uh oh, something happened to one of our medicine cats. Our vigilance during a night watch leads to an early detection of a badger threat. Our quick action saves the clan. Alright, well, go us. Judas Shade wishes to join the elders. Sparrowsar calls a meeting, and the clan honors them and all the service Judas Shade has given to them. So that's not really surprising. Judas Shade was older when they joined the clan as it was, and they've been a warrior for quite a while. So all things considered, Judas Shade is joining the elders pretty late. But that means we now have four elders, which is not something I'm used to seeing at all. Frost Whispers shows that Sky Scratch got to go on Border Patrol this morning. And Sparrow Star and Frost Whisper realize they have more in common than previously thought. I don't know if I really want to find a lot of common ground with Sparrow Star after they injured, I think it was Pigeon Flick, but one of the younger she cats. The weather has been cold and dry, and Bite Specs Paw Prads have cracked as a result. Okay, not the worst thing that could happen. Stone Fruit's white cough is gone, that's good. Raven Song slipped on some rocks and twisted their paw. Ooh, so that's what happened. Little Paw has gotten green cough, which is scary. Green cough is scary no matter what, but especially in winter time when it could spread really quick. Comfrey Paw no longer has a stomach ache. And some kind of blight has infected the herb sores. The messing cats have no choice but to clear out all the old herbs. So we're down a medicine cat and every possible herb that we had. So poor Lilac Chaser is all on her own with nothing in Leaf Bear. And Little Paw just got green cough. We really got a bad hand there. We can really only hope that we're able to find some herbs quickly and hold down the fort long enough for Ravensong to get better. Normally, I would be more inclined to switch Bite Spec back over to Medicine Cat just to help out. But at the end of the day, I don't think it's actually going to matter if we don't have any herbs to actually use as treatment. So, unfortunately, we're just going to have to keep our fingers crossed that we're able to get through this winter. We're currently thinking about how full kitty pet food must taste. Maybe we're just getting a little bit hungry, so anything's starting to cross our mind as a possible food source. But, oh, okay. So it looks like we do have the Lunar Moth wing back. It looks like we can actually equip multiple things at once. I actually really do like the Lunar Moth wing, uh, just because, you know, Moon Clan, it feels pretty fitting. And that's what the catnip flower looks like. 
I think I'm going to just do the lunar wing for now. We can always bring back our rabbit friend later. But I do like how this looks. Sparasar is currently craving the taste of shroom. Maybe we're going to talk to him while we bring him some. Sparasar is roughhousing with Shroom Kit. You hold your breath as they launch Shroom Kit off their back halfway into the air. Shroom Kit giggles and races back over to Sparasar. Aren't kids supposed to be fragile? Guess Sparasar doesn't treat them that way. He is fierce. It's fitting enough. So Fruit is feeling happy. Raven Song, despite his injury, is currently checking up on the warriors. More like Chaser saw Tula Kit playing with a kitty pet. Bayfair wonders if being a warrior would have been more fun. With her shameless personality, I honestly kind of see her wanting to be mediator just to try and get in on all the clan gossip. And maybe reality does not reflect that at all. But I do think we're just going to randomize this again. Ooh, Tulip Stripe and Sky Scratch have some feelings. We're going to strengthen that a little bit. Okay, so Greenfin, our Fisher, is back in full force. His status this moon is Fimchin. Yep. <laughs> Fimchin. <laughs> oh, I love Greenfin. Sky Scratch is currently sparring with some clan mates. And we did get an argument with her, so let's see what she says. We may not always see eye to eye, but we're part of the same clan. Let's put our differences aside. That is the most mature and well-rounded answer. She is humble, so I suppose it makes some sense. I really hope that little pod pulls through on this green cough. He's my favorite apprentice currently, and I'd be really sad if anything happened to him. Moonfern is currently seeking guidance from Starclan for the young ones. How about we have Moonfern lecture Shrink it about the different roles in the clan and Shrink it answers every question in the pop quiz correctly. Compassion 1. I would have expected that to round out our intelligence, but I guess you need some compassion to understand what people are doing? I don't know. Pluffpaw is wondering about the challenges of becoming a full-fledged queen. And sure, it's pretty daunting. Alright, so Fluffpaw held a scavenger hunt for a liar kit. It became frustrated when they couldn't find the things Fluffpaw hid for them in the scavenger hunt. Compassion and intelligence are now both minus one, while empathy is one. Liar kit is currently being mesmerized by the night sky, fitting enough for a moon clan cat to be enthralled by what the night has to offer. Shroom kit is currently chatting with Raven Song about what it's like to be a medicine cat. She's passionate, so maybe she will want to heal the clan, too. All right, let's go out on our patrol. We spot a large mouse nearby. We successfully sock and catch it. I'll make a good addition to the fresh kill pile. I hope that actually affects what we offer the fresh kill pile, since we do genuinely need the food. So we currently need 53 pieces of prey, which has gone down. I'm assuming because we lost some cats to elderhood and they don't need as much food. We currently have 78.3. So we're going to keep sending out as many apprentices to hunt as we can. We really want to try and keep ahead of those numbers. I like Chaser spot some raspberry just over the border. This isn't really specified in the challenge what medicine cats can do. In the books, the medicine cats basically can ignore the borders in order to help other clans grab herbs as necessary, collaborate with one another, so I don't think Lilac Chaser would get in any trouble even if she's found. They pad over to the border and hesitate only momentarily before crossing. They gather some berries, making sure they plenty for Clay Clan's medicine cat. Relationships have improved, and we finally have an herb. Okay, I'm basically sending all the cats that don't have an apprentice out on our border patrol for the moon because we don't really have many options right now. On their way to mark the far corners of the forest territory, Caillou Pass starts telling a story of their ancestors to keep every cat entertained. Let's see if their methods work on us. Keeps the cat's minds off their long, shady, and therefore cold walk. Patrol goes quickly and easily. Thanks, Coyote Pat. 
Comfrey Paws spots a rabbit up ahead, but it seems to be acting strange. They can see its tremors from a few fox lengths away. Stone Fruit and Comfrey Paw do have a bit more reserved traits about them. And since this can hurt the clan, and Stone Fruit I think is experienced enough to know what happened last time, we're not going to proceed in catching that rabbit. Swan Spot and Flood Paw find a small burrow in the ground with a strange scent. They hesitate, unsure if this is worth checking. I'm honestly not sure either, but we're going to take this risk. It turns out to have been a waste of time, but we do bring back a small amount of prey. Okay, so we only bring back a few very small amounts of prey across pretty much all the hunting patrols. But that's still enough to get us 20 pieces of prey in total, so we're going to be keeping well ahead of everything there. Let's go ahead and time skip into Moon 23 for the clan. Okay. Moon Clan still does not have enough healthy medicine cats. It's not surprising Raven Song's not healed yet. We escort a sick clanmate to the medicine cats then. They're quiet, you have things tug at your heart. So given Frost Whisper's dreaming ability, I think what probably happened is he was alerted in the night by a clanmate in distress, either having fever dreams or other negative side effects of whatever ailment they have. And so Frost Whisper, I think, was the one that woke, alerted them to their illness and encouraged them to go to the medicine cat den. So I think that's probably what happened there, but we'll have to wait and see if there's any cat that that could actually have fit the bill for. You discover a new shortcut through the territory. The thrill of discovery fills you with excitement. You lead a hunting patrol, your clanmates following your signals as you track a rabbit. Okay, so we're showing some leadership qualities and exploration, so maybe we're starting to integrate ourselves into the clan a little bit better. I genuinely wasn't expecting this. The young Fluffpaw is ready to embrace her role as a queen earlier than many expected. The clan gathers to offer support and blessings for their new journey. I really want to know what their name ended up being, but I think Fluff will be a good queen for the clan. Frost Whisper is jealous that Stone Fruit went on patrol without them. I mean, they're their deputy, they can do whatever they want. So, Sky Scratch healed from their claw wound, they'll forever be marked by a scar. So I guess Sparrowstar, it was Sky Scratch that Sparrowstar went after, and I guess he really wasn't holding back. Sparrowstar has been impatient, and Lilac Chasers knows they haven't been the most diligent with their leg strengthening exercises. It's unfortunately having consequences as their healing broken bone has given them a weaker leg. It's also not really surprising because Sparrowstar, as a fierce leader, I can definitely see being that impatient cat and insisting that he's fine a lot sooner than he should have and causing a lot longer term damage as a result. Sparrowstar can also see having arrogance just around his leadership that, you know, there wouldn't be any real consequences to a leader who has been blessed by Sarclan. Fight Specs pads have healed and Weasel Reed has gotten green caught, so exactly what I feared was going to happen is happening. And since Weasel Reed's the only one who got sick over this moon, I guess it was Weasel Reed that Frost Whisper was alerted to the illness for. So, fittingly enough, it was our own sibling that we delivered care to. And our last encounter is Flip Paw was seen speaking calmly to a cat from Clay Clan. Normally, that would be a strike, however, Flip Paw is an apprentice. So they will just be punished with doing chores around camp, like taking care of the elders, and they will be saved from any further repercussions since they are young and don't know any better yet. Oh no, look at Sky Scratch. We're really going to be living up to your name now, Sky Scratch. Let me see you. Oh, big claw right across her face. It looks like it almost hit the eye, too, so she's really lucky she didn't end up losing an eye. But I don't think it would have ended up well for Sparrow Star if he straight up blinded one of his clan mates slash subordinates. 
Speaking of Sparrowstar, he now does have a permanent weak leg, but his broken bone is healed. He's currently trying to learn from Blue Runner's legacy. If I remember correctly, Blue Runner at the time was our only kind of calm, relaxed cat. So maybe Sparrowstar is trying to channel some of her inner wisdom. Or I guess legacy could also refer to her kits, of which we just have Lilac Chaser. So maybe Sparrowstar is trying to learn from Blue Runner and her kits about some form of compassion or understanding that he may be lacking right now. Stonefruit is once again fretting over a recent increase in fox sightings near the camp. We did have an argument with him though, so we're going to go ahead and insult him. Psh, whatever, I don't even care. Since we were arguing over Border Patrol, I honestly think Stonefruit is probably upping the number of Border Patrols in relation to the number of fox sightings there have been. And we're kind of taking that negatively, that he is probably heading that, and we're probably being left a bit more on the wayside. Raven Song is still healing. Almost hurting himself, even. Lilac Chaser is daydreaming. She can only care for up to 14 members. And at present, I think we literally just have one raspberry. So we really need to get some cat mint for these cats that are sick with green caw. Oh, Bafer is giving some advice to us. I wonder if there's a particular cat that we're being mediated with them. I think in honor of that, we'll randomize this. I'm not going to allow Romantic while we're mediating ourselves, though. I feel like we have a lot of good relationships with the elders, so whether we are just looking to them for wisdom or like their stories, or whether or not we find ourselves in their dreams more often because they sleep more often, not really sure yet. Poor Coyote Path took out their own insecurities on a friend the other day and they feel awfully guilty now. I don't think that would have been the root of our disagreement with Coyote Path, but I guess that could be a consideration for us. Currently, we are just curious about the other clans. We haven't really had a status about another cat in the clan for quite a while. Oh, you know what I also just realized? Weasel Reed is currently strapping on Whiskerpaw. But Weasel Reed is obviously Little Paw's mentor. So it's very possible that Weasel Reed got sick dropping in to visit Little Paw, maybe behind the medicine cat's back. Because with Green Cough, at any point in time, that could be really dangerous. And with no herbs at all to heal, I could see them setting up a pure, you know, quarantine. So maybe Weasel Reed wanted to drop in and try and see Little Paw and ended up getting sick. With his arrogant nature, I could see him thinking that maybe he'd be an exception and then he wasn't when he got ill. Speaking of Elder Sleeping More, Holopelt is snoring loudly right now. Nice, the ice has been sleeping a lot more as of late. I really hope that doesn't have any negative connotations for them since they do have a dark forest bond. And as they get older, maybe some of those walls between here and there start to wear thinner. Especially if you sleep more. Bitespec is currently being scolded for straying too far from camp. He really doesn't know how to slow down, does he? Moonfern is currently assisting a queen with particularly mischievous kits. And it looks like the other queen would be Fluffroar here. He's thinking of ways to comfort a kit who had a troubling dream. Fluffroar ended up being gloomy and multilingual, which I definitely wasn't expecting. And I guess in the context of this game and this system, multilingual probably means something like uh, Midnight, the Badger, where they speak multiple animal languages, not multiple cat languages. So I wonder what Fluffroar can communicate with. So Moonfern tries to have Willow Kit clean, but Willow Kit accidentally mixes up the dirty and clean moss, and Moonfern only knows this after the fact, so ultimately nothing actually gets done. And poor Willow Kit loses an intelligence point. 
And Fluffroar is only 10 moons old, but they get their full name. They are mentored by Moonfern, and they graduate their honor for their hard work. Their training went so well, they graduated early at 10 moons old. All right, so this is just to try and have even some things out. I tried to have Fluffroar play Moss Boss Willow Kit, but during the game, when it's Willow Kit's turn to catch, they hesitate and shrink back as the ball flies their way. So they lost courage. Not doing too well with Willow Kit, but they are getting close to the point in time where they will be apprentices. Lyra Kit is asking Golder Cats how kittens are made, and Willow Kit is currently hiding from other cats. And both will be apprentices next moon. All right, let's go out on our life gen patrol for this moon. Oh, cat we have a crush on seems down lately. We want to do something to cheer them up. We decide to share a humorous story from our apprentice days. They listen attentively, and by the end, their moon seems lifted. They thank you for making them smile. Oh, that's so sweet. Is that an actual thing, or do we still not have any romantic interest in anyone at all? We still don't have any actual romantic interest in anyone. If we're going just based off of platonic like, we've got way too many options to choose from. Oh. While searching for some specific herbs, Lilac Chaser is startled by weird sounds and whispers on the wind. Well, I don't think we're ever going to say no to new queen and kids. Even if it is Leaf Fair, we can't just leave them be. It takes ages for Lilac Chaser to pinpoint the sounds, but eventually they find the hidden birthing nest of a dead, cold queen. Their newborn kids by their side. Lilac Chaser makes sure the queen is given a vigil. As the kids grow older, they'll have questions about their parent. Broccoli's ghost now wonders. Oh no, Broccoli. But Icy Kit, Duck Kit, and Magnolia Kit have joined the clan, and their reputation with outsiders has improved. Let's check them out. Uh, so at first here we have Icy Kit, who's now snuggled safe in a nursery under the care of our two adept queens. She's a newborn female with sage eyes and a masked tabby gray and white pelt. She is patient. Then we have Duck Kit, a newborn male with dark blue eyes, a white pale tabby pelt. Just tabby. He is nervous. Finally, we have Magnolia Kit, who is a newborn male with sunlit eye size and a speckled white pelt. He is disciplined. I really do like Icy as a prefix for these three colder kits, but we do still have Icy Ice, and I don't want to get too confused. I also kind of like the idea of just like a winter theme for these three kits, since it's Leaf Bear and we found them all alone. This is what Broccoli, their parent, looked like, by the way. She was an adult female with cyan eyes and a masked silver pelt. She was mellow, a renowned hunter and lore keeper, so her loss will definitely be missed. But I do like the idea of having a winter theme for these three white and gray kits who were found dead of winter. So I'm going to go ahead and change all of their names accordingly. Okay, so Icy Kit is now Frozen Kit. Duck Kit is now Snow Kit. And Magnolia Kit is now Cold Kit. So we've got our little winter litter here now. I'm really excited to see how they grow. Okay, we are now at 85 pieces of prey to 53 needed prey. So we're slowly edging out ahead, but we are not going to slack too much in hunting anyway. Okay, once again, it's just four cats that don't have an apprentice going out on our border patrol for the moon. That includes us, and it's also Sparrow Star and Sky Scratch together, so hopefully this isn't too awkward of a patrol. The patrol hears a cat begging for their household to come back, just barely legible over the sound of a monster speeding away. Okay, I mean, realistically, if all this is happening at once, we wouldn't know we just brought back a litter of three cats, but... All the same, it's Leaf Bear, and we're most likely to antagonize. So Sparrows are at the head. Unfortunately, we are not going to 
allow this cat into the clan, and as bad as I feel, we're going to antagonize. We tell the kitty pet that they aren't welcome here, but after they hear the kitty pet is ill, they agree to carry them to nearby Two Lake Den to find help. Hopefully that's the best outcome that we can get. We definitely couldn't really take a cat in any way that's sick. There's just no herbs to go around. Stone fruit and comfrey paw bring back a huge amount of prey. Ooh, yeah, look at that number jump up. Even so, I think we're going to send everyone else out hunting still. It starts snowing soon after the troll sets out, trying to bring back something, anything for the fresh kill pile. We don't have any cats that need to proceed in a dangerous condition, and no matter what, a little bit of food is not worth a cat not coming back, so we're not going to proceed. Alright, I think that's where we will leave that off there today. I apologize if this is a little bit of a shorter episode. I was pretty coughing throughout, so I'm going to be cutting out any audio that sounds particularly bad for any reason, and that could definitely leave this a little bit shorter than the usual. But again, don't worry, I'm sure I'll be totally fine here soon. But again, please just let me know how you like this microphone. I'm still not really sure myself, if I'm being honest. I streamed with it once, and it's been... I mean, I think it sounds okay. It just sounds different, and I'm not sure how I like the different to be. But I'm going to try and give it some justice here in the editing, so I may change my mind even as that goes. So, without any further ado, uh, feel free to check out links in the description below. There will be some fun things down there, including a link to my Twitch, where I'm trying to stream every Saturday at 3 p.m., barring anything that comes up like me not being able to talk reliably. So if you want to know my stream schedule, feel free to join the Discord. Link is also in the description below. I'm going to be doing my best to keep on top of my stream schedule so you will know right away when I am or am not streaming and why if I'm not. So thank you as always to Parental Units for supporting the channel as that is greatly appreciated. And with all that being said, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Stay safe and stay happy. I'll see you next time. And bye.